After all of the damage comes the tornado survey. I followed a team around to find out how these surveys are keeping you safe. What we're doing at this point is to try to get a feel for where is the edge of the tornado damage, both width as well as length. Because um, as you see, there's sometimes a very abrupt difference between completely unscathed area to you know minor damage to a lot more significant damage. A tornado survey is time consuming and coordinated. Five separate teams are working across the area to determine if this damage right here is one tornado or perhaps two like in this case. This coordination helps the teams determine the length, the size and the time on the ground of the tornado. We communicate then we have a, a person back at the office who we're in kind of in constant contact with and in terms of, OK, here's where it topped out here and here's where we're going. Julie tells me that home insurance or federal assistance actually plays very little into her survey. As she says, everybody knows damage is damage. The vast majority of the damage we've seen, that being said, was EF2, but there were some areas where it did cross the threshold of EF3. The focus of this study really is about a knowledge base for forecasters and adding to weather studies to help keep you safe. So we're gathering this information to try and correlate to help improve future warnings. Today they're going to correlate with the five separate teams, but it's, you know, the preliminary stuff is out now. We know they're EF3s, but they're going to look at the much broader sense of all of this. And the most important thing that they get out of this are these little nuggets. There's a term called debris ball. We'll describe it at another time. You can Google it right now. We talked about a couple of flying debris indicating stronger tornadoes. All of those little nuggets that just make it easier for a forecaster to say, go to the basement right now. So we'll learn this over the course of the next couple of weeks.